I started playing Magic the Gathering in 1995. I was 8 years old. My name is Paulo Vitor Damo da Rosa, and you might know me as PVDTR. When I was 13, I entered into the Brazilian Nationals for the first time. I think the best way to get better at anything is to compete, and magic isn't different. I think if you put yourself in a tournament scenario, you're just going to learn so much more. This guy is an absolute monster, and I tell you what, Paolo is the uh, shaker here. He is the player of the year. One of the best of all time, of course, in Paulo Vitor da Rosa. Playing Magic the Gathering professionally happened really organically, but I knew it wasn't going to be easy. Like right now, for example, I'm missing my wife's graduation, I'm missing her birthday, I'm missing Valentine's Day. There, there have been years where I've been away for about half a year. When I started playing Magic, I did very well. Having success at such a young age meant I never really needed a backup plan. Until 2012, when I had my first down year, where I basically didn't win anything. After that, I had another bad year, 2013, and that was the point where I started thinking maybe I have to do something else, maybe I'm just not good enough. And even if I am, you know, if I'm just losing constantly, I can't keep doing this forever, I can't keep losing forever. I considered quitting and doing something else, so I looked at other alternatives. I enrolled in the university and majored in international relations, which I graduated from in 2014 but I didn't want to just quit without giving myself another chance. So I gave myself another year. I decided that I would have this one more shot to do well. So I played another year competitively and I did well in that year, I succeeded. And at that point I knew I was going to continue playing Magic professionally and my dedication paid off because shortly after I became player of the year in 16-17. Four, five, and that does it. It's a lethal attack and Paulo Vitor Domino Rosa wins the tournament. He is your player of the year. Out of all the accomplishments, the world title is the one that I want the most. It's the one thing I'm still searching for. Welcome to coverage of World Championship 26, powered by Alienware from beautiful Honolulu, Hawaii. Hello, everyone, wherever you are around the world. Welcome to the biggest and the best tournament of the year. We're gonna kick things off with a draft this morning, Theros Beyond Death Draft. I'm super excited to see this happen. If you get two wins, you get boosted up into the winner's bracket. Two losses will send you down into the elimination bracket, which is where we pick up standard later today. So if I could redo the draft, I, I definitely would. I'm not very happy with it, but it's a reasonable deck. It's not bad, but I'm not thrilled about it. I won the first match, it was kind of uh, quick because I don't think my opponent had very many good draws and even though I don't like the white decks, they can punish bad draws a lot. So for example, in game one, my opponent didn't play a third land and I just had you know four creatures in play at that point and then there was really nothing he could do. So yeah, things are going well so far. Looks like he's going to block Ooh. with just one and go down to just one life. Oh goodness. But I mean, let's be honest, Paolo is possibly the best Magic player in the world. So he knows exactly what he's doing. He's got a plan. Ooh, 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 look at that, swinging in. What an absolutely stellar victory there from Paolo Vitor Damo de Rosa. That Boros deck did not look inspiring. Paolo's just turn for turn gameplay, knowing when to go to one life in that final game, and then seemingly abruptly winning like that. I mean, that's very, very hard to do in what is essentially a bombless deck. There's two different fire decks. For four people, right? Yeah, there's three different red decks. There's two blue white decks, and I think there's four different reclamations. So the two O's right now are mono red, mono red, just sky fires. Just sky fires. No, no, no. Vartic. It's reclamation, mono red, fires, and blue white. Oh. Let me tweet about my result. It's hard to know if this is the year. I mean, I think it's never been closer to me than it is now, because the, the World Championship has never been smaller. At first, the World Championship was 400 people, right? And then it became 24 people, and now it's 16 people. So I believe I'm as close to the world title as I've ever been. And we're gonna see Paolo Vitor Damo de Rosa make it through, make it through to the top eight. Oh. Paolo is just so flippin' good. 
at Magic? It feels incredible. I mean, I, I was so afraid that I was going to come here and bomb this tournament and then you know, who knows when I have the chance to do it again and it's pretty hard to qualify for this. This is really, really, really bad news for Model Red and Seth yes. Manfield fans. He had to win that game. He had to. He has such an advantage in game one in this matchup. And now we go to the sideboards. If the matchups keep breaking this way and he continues to play at this level, well, we may have a good have, game there from I, Seth Manfield. We might Paolo find our champion. Is picking up a very, very clean 2 0 against Seth Manfield. Because I know Paulo said that he was nervous coming in, which I think is always so funny for someone <laughs> who's accomplished so much to be nervous. I don't really stay calm until <laughs> the next day. I stay very nervous. You know, I know who I'm playing against, so I'm going to practice a little bit today, but I'm not going to just practice. I'm not going to go back to my hotel room and practice for six hours and then sleep and come tomorrow. Uh, I'm going to relax a little bit, you know, maybe go shopping. I came straight from Prague to Hawaii, so my suitcase is very, very full because it's like super winter and then it's Hawaii. And they gave it so much stuff at Worlds that I probably have to buy another suitcase, otherwise I won't be able to carry it. Uh, th this, is the, this is the 20, this is the 25, or? This one, yes. 20, 25. Thank you all so much for coming out this morning. Today, we will be crowning the Magic the Gathering world champion. Things are looking very good here for Paolo Vitor, Damo De Rosa. Marcio Carvalho needs something amazing off the top of his library to take this away from Paolo. That's a Cavalier of Flame. That is a Cavalier of Flame, and if one Archon's good, two is better. And you oh, can yeah. see the copy of Aether Gust here in Paolo's mm -hmm. hand. He'll think, but ultimately with Paolo at 14 life, I think Paolo, Paolo, actually he, he can't because the Teferis, that is it. There we go, Paolo Vitor, Damo De Rosa picks up the victory. He is the upper final winner, and he is moving on to the grand finals. It feels great. I'm very relieved. I'm just hoping I can win the next one. There's only one more, so I'm so close. So I'm feeling comfortable, whoever it is. I'm just going to relax and get mentally ready. That's why I prepared two speeches for social media. What if I win and what if I lose? You are written now? No. What are you going to write if you win? I don't know. I have an idea. I, I don't want to spoil it. What if you know it, then I'll never hear. You'll never hear. You have to wait until I win Worlds. Uh, that's going to be forever. <laughs> so the race is on and our players are ready. So let's head back inside for World Championship 26. It's time for the Grand Finals. Okay, he's going to run out. Elspeth conquers death. And there's going to be a very short window for Marcio Carvalho here. Marcio just wants to top deck Kenrith off the top. Nothing doing. And we're even going to see another copy of Teferi Time Raveler. And that's a good game for Marcio Carvalho. Paulo Vitor Dominarosa just took one very large step towards becoming your world champion. He only needs to win one more match. If Marcio wins this, it would be the greatest comeback in the history of our game. I'm already happy with what's happened. Obviously, I want to do better. I want that title. But it's a relief that I didn't come here and finish last place. Wow. I don't need to discard anything because I've got yep. the double trouble here. Cavalier Gears, Cavalier of Flame, and that is game number one going to Marcio Carvalho. He's on the board. That's not good enough. No, that, that's not. He's dead. He's just dead on board? Yeah, Marcio. You have a blocker. Oh, yeah, no, that, that, that's it. Marcio's yeah. going to take this match. Wow. Two to zero for Marcio Carvalho as he moves one step closer to this insane comeback. What is this Narset gonna find? That's the key, because he needs to find an answer for Kenrith. Did he miss? I think he did. I think he whiffed on Narset. Wow. Oh man, that is not the time that is you tough. want that to happen. Elspeth, Elspeth conquers death and hope for the best, but we know that Marcia has Bone Crusher Giant, he has Stomp and Cavalier Flame. Marcio's gonna take this match down. Wow, did you see that fist pump from Marcio Carvalho? Once that mana hit the battlefield, he was like, yes, I know I have you. Stomp. To Paulo Vitor Domino Rosa and we've got Marcio a fourth match. Carvalho. We've got a fourth match. He's ready to try to win this thing. It is wow. never easy here at the World Championship. He's got to reset here. You know who else needs to? Paulo. He's used to the highest stakes, but this is unlike anything we've ever seen. We're playing for three hundred thousand dollars. He won the first match pretty quickly, and the wheels have well and truly come off for him. He needs to get centered, have some good draws, and try to win this uh, championship. I hope this is the year, but obviously there's no way to know that. We have a keep for both of our players. It was Marcio who won the die roll here. He knows that this is just about to tip over on him, and these creatures are going to start coming in sooner than later. 
Yeah, Pollux can go for double scry with the double omen of the sea here, or he can just use that castle of interest that he has in play if he feels like he only needs a, a singular scry effect here. Uh-oh, Paulo's starting to actually map out turns. He's doing math. This is not good for Marcio. <laughs> Paulo Vitor is going to make a Castle Ardenvale token, but at nine life, there's plenty of power in the air to get the job done here for Paulo Vitor. Domino Rosa, he is going to move one game away from a world championship. And as you mentioned, for Marcio Carvalho, he is up against the wall. No wiggle room. He's never had any. <laughs> he hasn't. And now, again, you can't draw it up any better. Who needs He's down again? wiggle room? But guess what? He was down again in the game in the last match. We've seen how the Cyborg games play out. I, I do believe that Marcio is slightly favored after Cyborg, so this should be interesting. Uh-oh. It's got the that war boss, but no red source. Terrible. Double white? No white mana, three red cards, no red mana. Temple of Triumph, please. Oh, he kept heaps. it. Ooh, Marcio has kept, he needs to is... find. Particularly a red white land would be ideal. But but red, he needs the red one. Gotta have red mana. And a Teferi Time Raveler off the top of the library. But once again, there's still that Narset anyway. But this and this is gonna get disputed. Oh, and that's, that's gonna it. be it. Paulo Vitor Domino Rosa is your world champion. Eighteen years have gone by, and now you get to be world champion. I am Paulo Vitor Domino Rosa. I am PDDDR, and I'm the world champion. sort of a culmination of all my work in Magic uh, because I, I feel like I've already done everything else. This was the one thing that, you know, I still had to do, right? I won the biggest tournament in the history of the game. Oh no, I have no plans of stopping. I'll, I'll continue playing, I'll continue trying my hardest, but I'm just gonna relax for about a month and a half.